on the practice schedule. Okay, so I appreciate you guys coming over. I know this is probably a day you get to kind of relax maybe a little bit, but uh, I want to start off. You guys saw the news yesterday about Kelly Kraskoff. Um, she's going to be you know, leaving us to go run the fever again. Super happy for her. She was a huge part of our front office and um, helping us build our team and you know run our team from day to day. And uh, definitely going to miss Kelly, but also excited for her. And I think she's stepping into a great situation. I think as we all know, see what the fever are doing. Hopefully they can uh, keep their season going tomorrow. And um, but I know Kelly's excited for the new opportunity, and, and we are as well. And um, just wanted to start off by thanking her on, on all of her contributions to the Pacers. So, uh, with that, I'll let you guys fire away. If you have any questions, uh, we got Ted up here um, helping us today. You know, we're uh, excited for kind of his future. You guys kind of know him a little bit, but we wanted to start to get you guys to have a little more familiarity and getting to know him as well. A very bright young executive. Um, who's been a huge part of what we do as well. So uh, feel free to ask Ted any questions today as well. Chad, what's the best way to carry over the great success that you guys had last last year to what's coming in this season? Yeah, I think last year was one of the funnest years I've ever experienced. I think a lot of people in our organization, organization would tell you that. I think it's also time for us to look forward. Um, you know, we got a team of guys that we brought back. Mostly everybody's intact for the most part. It was a good chemistry last year. We're hopeful for the same thing to carry over. And it's time to, for guys to individually grow and see where that takes us as a team. You know, we had a lot of development last year. Our coaches did a terrific job of developing so many young players and so many veteran players that developed as well. And I think you know, this season, we're looking forward to getting it back together. Um, I think our guys are anxious to get started. I think they, they feel a little slighted. I mean, I think they hear people talk about us like, you know, they kind of look past what we accomplished last year, and I think they're hungry to, to play well and uh, get back going again this season. You talked about just bringing everybody back, obviously, a lot of uh, long-term contracts over this offseason between Pascal and Obi and, and Andrew and TJ. I guess to what degree do you feel like you guys sent a message that you really like this group for one thing, and that, that this is, I mean, do you kind of, obviously you still have some level of flexibility going forward, but you're getting close to the tax. I guess, did you guys kind of show a sign that, you know, this is the this is our group, these are our guys, this is what we're happy with, and you also view this as kind of the beginning of your championship window? Yeah, obviously, it's sort of bringing back this group is a reflection of how we feel about them. And, you know, for ownership to make the commitment to several of these guys financially uh, is another message to this group that we believe in you guys. And we're always going to be evaluating this team. You know, you're never probably completely satisfied with what you have. We're always going to be looking for opportunities to, to be better, but we also feel like this group has shown great chemistry. The pieces fit well last year. I think Coach Carla and our staff really found an identity, a playing style that maximizes you know this group. Um, there's areas we got to address and improve on. You know, we're we got to be better defensively, um, and I think you know some of the young guys will, will hopefully grow into that. And I think that's an emphasis for our coaches this year. But you know, as far as are we in a championship window, I think we're. Our ownership is committed to, to try and win. You know, we, we've gone through some rebuilding over the last few years, and we feel like we've found a group that's got something. And we want to continue to develop this group and develop some of our young players along the way and, and compete, because nothing more that our owner wants than to bring a championship to this city. Chad, what do you expect and what are you looking for from Ben? Matherin or Shepard? Ma oh, I'm sorry. Matherin, 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 Matherin. Yes. Um, I think, first off, he's healthy, which is great. Um, you know, going through what he went through last year, sitting over there watching our team have success without him, you know, on the court, I think was hard for him, but I also think it was good for his development too. I think he saw what it takes to play the way we really want to play, what it takes to play and be successful in a playoff setting. I think he's he took a lot of that in. He's a very reflective person and he, he really observes what's going on around him. I think you'll see a, a different side to him this year that's really playing, adapting to the way that we play. But I think he's gonna he's gonna have to hit the ground running. I think a training camp's gonna be important for him. He's back healthy and he's hungry. And we just did a conditioning test with our guys today, and he was trying to keep up with T.J. McConnell the whole day. I mean, he's, as you know, he's a very competitive guy, and he's very very hungry to get back out on the court. And I expect him to have a very good training camp. Rick talked a lot last year about him having to just earning the responsibility of starting. That seemed like it was at least something that that mattered in, in terms of his thinking at the time. Does it matter less now whether Ben starts or not? I think for Ben, he wants to win number one, but I think you know his role is important to him. He wants to feel like he's contributing. I think he recognizes, hey, we found a group last year that plays well together, and he's got to figure out where do I fit into that group? Is it as trying to compete as a starter? Is it being a, a primary scorer off the bench? What is that role? 
I think a lot of that's determined in training camp. You know, our guys, the month of October is very important for our coaches. It's very important for our young guys to establish the growth that they're making. Uh, veterans got to prove that, you know, hey, I'm, I'm back. I'm ready to continue doing what I've been doing. Uh, but I think for Ben, you know, his role is, is to be determined and it's kind of in his hands. Uh, but I also think he understands, hey, we have, we have some depth on this roster. There's guys that, you know, do some things that maybe I can't do. I do some things they can't do. And it's up to the coaches to find my best role. But I think at the end of the day, winning is the most important thing for Ben. Chad, I just wanted to add to that. Just, I think, finding the chemistry between both, front, um, both Tyrese and the second unit uh, for Ben is important. And I think that's something that he was able to observe as he was coming along uh, outside watching the playoffs. Such a similar team from last year to this year. What to you would it take for this team to be better and be able to get back to where you guys were last year? Continued growth from our every guy on the roster. I mean, you can talk about young guys developing, which is important to our success long term. But there's veteran players that are still developing. I think you can make a case. Miles Turner last year developed. I mean, he's been here. This that was ninth year with us, I believe. And you see his growth. I think for us to take that next step, it's that. But it's also be committed to, to defending. You know, I think you know that was obviously a weak spot for this team last year. We were a terrific offensive team, a historic offense. And I think our coaches and our players know for us to take that next step. We saw in the playoffs what Boston did. You know, when games got close the last couple of minutes, they won games with their defense. And I think our guys take away from all those experiences and understand for us to really take another step. It's our young guys and everybody on the team developing, but it's also becoming a better defensive, defensive unit. You mentioned Miles going into a contract year, can't be extended. What do you see as your future with him and how he plays into the, the next couple years of this franchise? Yeah, Miles, obviously, is all he knows is the Pacers, and he's a big part of our identity. Um, he's a big part of our identity on the court, off the court. Uh, he's great in the community, as you know, but his development fit with Rick's system, fit with our point guards, fit with Pascal. I think you, would, you, you see how he... He seamlessly fits into the way we play, and we, we're a big believer in Miles, and we want him to be here. Um, you know, he's been our starting center. You know, since we made the trade with Domas, he's established himself in that role, and he's continued to make growth uh, with his play. And I think there's still more growth with him. I think he's he's determined to get back to being, you know, a rim protector, the defensive presence that we need him to be. But also, he knows his fit offensively, and like I said, he's he's with Tyrese and Pascal in our primary offensive threats, the way he compliments both those guys, is it's, it's hard to find somebody in the league that does it better. Ted, continuity will be a big theme all season, at least in the beginning. As you kind of put the, the roster together in the summer, was it the number one goal to bring back as many as you could just because of how what you saw last season? Yeah, I think Chad hit on a lot of those points already and seeing the growth and development of a lot of the team and the success that that roster had. Uh, we went into the offseason very intentional with, with wanting to reward and bring back a lot of the, the same pieces. And I think we also plan ahead with that as well. Like It's not that it's one of those things where you have to be set on this. We still keep a lot of our options and flexibility going forward. And similar to decisions that we'll have to make going um, ahead with us, it's something that we wanted to bring this team back together. These are the kind of guys, though, that don't seem like they'll be satisfied because they got a new deal. I mean, do you sense that? Correct. I, we do. I think we have a group that is um, a, a hard-working group, and they'll continue to, to fight for everything that, um, that that they need to earn. And uh, we talk about what training camp is going to bring. Nothing's going to be given to these guys, and they're going to earn every piece of it. Chad, ties into the pace of the franchise now for a little bit. But what's the next step for him? It's a great question. I think if you were asked Ty that, I think the, his experience this summer is going to help propel him a little bit in different ways. I think, you know, first of all, the understanding of being, you know, the leadership component of it is, you know, he got to witness some of the best players in the league, you know, for basically six, seven weeks straight and be around those guys and soak in how they take care of themselves, how they deal with teammates, how they react to coaches, how they handle practices. And so just that day to day, how you handle yourself when you're that type of player and there's that much responsibility on you, I think will be beneficial to him. But I think the strength part will be important to him as it, as it continues as body matures, getting stronger to take some of the contact that he receives. When you have the ball in your hands that much, you're gonna get bumped around quite a bit. And then the defensive side, I think, you know, he's, he's a great example of, you know, if he can take a step for us defensively, he does wonders for the team. And I think he understands that. He's, one of the brightest players you know I've ever been around. So he understands the areas where 
he's weak and needs to grow and um, he's always trying to find ways. He's always, he watches games all the time. You see him at the Fever games all the time. He's, he's a basketball junkie and so he's always looking for ways to improve himself, which is a, a great quality for him. I think you'll see another step with him this year. He took a great step last year and I expect him to take another one this year. He's excited Pascal's back as well. Just how cool is it then to see him embrace this and what's his role now? Obviously he's that seems to be that leader on the team as well. Yeah, I think Pascal, Ty, and Miles have really stepped up in a leadership role for this group. You guys saw probably you know some of the video and clips of what they did last week in Orlando at, at Pascal's place. And Pascal's at the point in his career where he's it's just about winning. You know, he's secured his contract. He's established himself as a player, and winning is all that matters to him. And he's, his leadership is showing with some of our younger guys. He's, you see it in some of the video clips. You, we see it every day, taking young guys under his wing and kind of passing on information that can help help that player. But he, Pascal also knows, I see potential in this guy to help our team, which helps all of us. So his leadership has really taken another step, I feel like. And we've encouraged that. When we traded for him, you know, he's a guy coming in, he has a, a championship ring, he's an established player, a, multi all-star and we encourage them you know we need your voice you know this is a young group for the most part and they need to hear from you pass on your knowledge you know deliver messages at the right moment he, he started to do that last year and i feel like this summer he's really taken it to another level what did you make of what nimhart was able to do when he got here the minutes he got with tyrus pitcher late last season in the playoffs what, what he did with that and how did he use that to go forward while keeping the role he's yeah, I mean, Drew embraced that opportunity that was that was given to him. Um, unfortunate circumstances at the, at the end of that Boston series, but he's shown that he's capable of being that type of player, and he carried that through into the, the Olympics as well. I think you saw a lot of that um, continued growth and development um, playing for Team Canada. Um, you know, really excited for for us to be able to retain him long term and continue to have him as as a really key piece to to our team going forward. The fact that he can do so many different things, he can play different roles, he can play on, he can play off, he can you know, serve as that secondary ball handler, be what he can be defensively. I, mean, I think Rick used the term ecosystem in terms of like how he makes everything work. How big is he as a piece, not only for this team, but also the future of this organization, the fact that you can fit him in so many different ways? Yeah, I think that type of flexibility and the ability to kind of piece him with any, any kind of combination of our, of our players is a, is a key piece uh, going forward. And, Retaining that was really important for us this offseason, and we were able to do, to do that. Um, and excited for him to continue to develop and, and grow with, with the rest of the group. I think we saw in red that Tyrese maybe got hurt a little bit in the Olympics or was dealing with an injury there. Is there any specifics you can provide on that and his health status heading into camp next week? Yeah, I mean, obviously you go through a long stretch like that, you're going to have some pulls, strains, bumps, bruises like that. Um, but, you know, he's back participating. Um, you know, our guys have been in town the last couple of days, and he's, he's anticipating him being a full go for a start of camp. Is he still dealing with any lingering issue from the hamstring? Not, no, I don't think so. He seems pretty happy. He did the conditioning test today, so um, I, I think he's ready to go. I think he's, he's, he's fired up for the season. I was going to say, uh, Coach mentioned Jarris was in the process of changing positions from the four to the three. What do you guys want to see from Jarris next season? I would say the defensive side of Jairus' game is where we see the most potential to help our team. He obviously has talent with the ball in his hands. He can you know, pass, handle, saw his shooting last year develop. But I think the, the defensive side of the ball is where he could have our most impact. You know, His ability to guard multiple spots, his size, his ability to move his feet, his ability to block shots, his ability to rebound, his ability to take the ball off the glass and, and take it and go with it, kind of like Pascal does. Those are things that our team needs but we need to see it on a consistent basis. You know, we can't, you know, young players will show it in, you know, glimpses, but putting it together on a more consistent basis is the next step for Jairus. And I think training camp is a big part of, you know, where his role evolves into this year. He's, he's got to come in and establish himself that he's taken another step in the areas that, you know, coaches have been talking to him about uh, that they want to see because there's potential on the defensive side of the ball that can really be impactful for our team. Ted, you guys added James Wiseman, free agent. What what did you guys see in him that made you want to bring him in? Yeah, the opportunity to, to find somebody you know as talented as James um, with the resources that we had available, um, you know, I think will will go a long way for us. Um, you know, our, we having a, a three centers is important to to our coaching staff. Uh, you never know kind of how. 
how the season goes on. Last year, um, we had a similar rotation like that. Um, and, and we're kind of excited to see the, the growth and development that, that James can bring to, to, to our team and, and to prop up that, that center position. Chad, one of the, the opposing coaches would always talk about the Pacers and their pace. And one of them, I don't remember which one said, everybody says they want to play fast, but these guys play faster than anyone. What do you attribute that to? Because it's not just Tyrese. Is it the conditioning? Like, how does this team able to do that over the course of the season? I think when we kind of identify players that fit with the way Rick wants to play and the way Tyrese plays, I think we naturally added, tried to add guys that can play up-tempo. You know, we've got some guys that are tremendous athletes that can really run, change directions, but it's an emphasis every day. If you were to watch, you know, our pickup games today, it's the same fast pace. You know, it's not something that they just turn on on game nights. It's an emphasis in everything our coaches do, every drill we do, um, every pickup game they play. You know, the guys said last week in Orlando, we had no, no, we never coaches there. It was all player led and player run, and they said it was some of the fastest games. Pascal said, "I've never played this fast in my life." Like we played fast last year, they were said it just picked up right where they left off. So it's it's developed just kind of their mentality in everything that they do, and it's a credit to our coaches for identifying this is the way this group can play and succeed, and we can be different from other teams. With Pascal specifically, have you had conversations where he maybe didn't know what he exactly he was getting into, and now that he does have that offseason, he can really hit the ground running too? For sure. I think if you were to ask him after the first 10 days with us last year, his agents were telling us like he, he wasn't ready for this level of pace. And you know, I think as he adapted to it as the season went on and now had an offseason to prepare for and train for it, uh, I think you'll see him hit the ground running this year. You mentioned defense earlier. I'm curious what you'd like to see change or be different to make the defense better this season. I think it's just a commitment from every player. You know, it's got to be important to you. I know our coaches stress it each and every day. They've communicated to our guys, and, you know, our players just have to take it upon themselves. It's got to be important to you every possession. It can't just be, you know, little stretches of play. As, as they saw last year, the Boston Celtics, they are locked in, you know, every possession. And the playoffs is a great learning experience for, our, for young guys. And, uh, but it has to be across the board. It can't just all be on Miles or Andrew to be, hey, you've got to make our team better defensively. It's got to be everybody contributing to that. And you know, we've we got to see growth in that area from our young guys. That's the biggest step of growth for our young team. It's not who's going to shoot more, score more, develop more pick and roll skills. It's like our next development is guys defensively. You know, we, we've seen what it takes to win a championship. We witnessed it right in our building, team that won it. So how can we take away what we learned from that to be better on the defensive side? And to add to that, like we saw strides throughout the season. So a lot of credit to the players for doing that as the second half kind of came on. And as it continued on to the playoffs, we did get better. But it's taking that next step even further. And, and part of the continuity of it is getting the same players together and, and building off of everything that we've accomplished last year. Keeping going on that, what, what, what was the biggest area of growth you did see? I mean, it seemed like, I know Rick talked about presence a lot and force. It seemed like there was more of that. I guess that you guys see it the same way. Hey, is your mic on? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the mic is for the TV. Uh, right. It's for the mold box for the TV. For the mold box for the TV. I'm sorry. Uh, no. no, no, no. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're all good. We're all good. We're all good. But yeah, I mean, like, what were the biggest areas of growth that you did see? And I guess, like, is, is consistency what you're looking for? Is, is there another, I guess, aspect, I guess, or, or maybe it's connectivity or whatever? I mean, what, where did you see the biggest rise? And, you know, what are the areas that, that you still look at to say, this is, this is where we got to get better? I would say for the team defensively, I think we got better at guarding the ball, number one. We took away threes, which I thought was beneficial. It was keeping guys out of the paint. You know, I think that was our biggest weakness. We had a lot of you know, pressure on the rim. Um, and some of that is, you know, just, you gotta be able to guard, as they say, guard your yard. You gotta be able to keep guys in front of you. Um, I thought we did a good job on shooters, like I mentioned, but, you know, being able to take away guys getting in the thick of your defense is the areas that, I think that didn't take the steps I think our coaches wanted to see. Um, the one thing in the NBA, it's hard to take away everything. You know, you gotta kind of pick Pick your what you're willing to give up and what you're willing to try to take away, and um, so finding out, you know, I think our coaches are always studying that. You know, they're they have a couple of our coaches, Jenny and Jim Boylan, are just obsessed with defense. They're studying other teams, they're studying other trends of what you know other teams are doing, and trying to implement with, implement that with us um, takes time, you know. But I think our guys taking it on, you know, the commitment of keeping guys out of the lane is would, would be a, a huge impact on our defense. Jay. 
Uh, none of us in here can pass it. Uh, it's, it's called a beep test, and it's basically it's a you know for simple explanation, it's just a continuous running three quarter court back and forth at different pace. It starts to the beeps start getting shorter and shorter, so you've got to keep up a little faster and faster. And it's if you were to watch you know watch guys do it, it's just a it's more of a it's a long winded cardio test than it is like short sprints. And TJ's best. He's usually right towards the top, yeah. So we have quite a few guys that are, I feel like our team looked like they were in great shape today. I mean, we have more guys going longer than we typically do. Um, I think they were prepared for it this year. Um, but it's, it's a, just a measurement of where you have your conditioning and you know, there's no punishment for your score or, or reward for a score. It's, it's kind of a pride thing for our guys too. In the playoffs, you kind of relied on full court pressure all the time on defense. Is that something you can do in an 82 game regular season? I think every game it's tough to do. I think there are certain matchups where you might try it or certain moments in the game where you can try it. Um, one of our strengths of our team obviously is our depth. So it gives us a little more flexibility to try and pick up the pace defensively by playing full court. Uh, but I think it's all, you know, kind of matchup determined and, you know, what, what can spark your team? You know, sometimes you're just trying to spark your team and there's just nights where you don't have a lot of energy or you're not playing well and then sometimes trying something like that can get your guys going and I think just that the playoff guys just they could play 96 minutes a night they're just they're so amped up so you can take advantage of that energy on those nights and I think you saw some of that in the playoffs with us doing that last year. Chad, what have you seen from Johnny since he was drafted? Uh, I thought summer league was more encouraging uh, you know, he's a young player. You're, you're not knowing what you're going to expect. You know, coming Johnny went from really kind of off the radar to being offered a scholarship by Kansas to being picked in the early second round of the draft. It happened really fast for him, and he'd tell you this was this happened faster than I anticipated. So there's parts of his game that are still evolving and they'll continue to evolve. But love his ability to run. Number one, um, love his ability to play without the ball, which I think is a valuable skill in our system. You know, he knows how to cut, he knows how to sprint to the corner, um, he knows how to cross the offensive glass. He's a, just an activity player. He's, he's one of those guys that if you're guarding him at the YMCA, you're, you're not, it's no fun because he's just never standing in one spot. And that, that ability to play without the ball and understand how to impact the game without touching the ball is important. And I think our guys, as they play more pickup with him, they understand like, okay, if this guy's moving, I gotta keep my, where's he at? Because he might be open. And the shooting part, as that continues to grow, will be a big part of his success with us. Um, but he's got you know, a lot of room, room to grow still, physically and skill-wise. Um, but excited what he showed us this summer. And you know, I imagine you'll see, you know, barring some injuries, I think you'll see a lot of time with him developing with the Mad Ants this year, be my guess. Uh, but he's got a great attitude, he's tough. Um, guys like him, you know, kind of keeps his mouth shut and just competes, which our veteran players really respect, respect that. Despite all the uh, you know, familiar faces coming back, you still kind of have to start over with chemistry wise. Is there anything that the organization and coaches can do to help facilitate that, or is that all player led, obviously, other than winning? <laughs> yeah, I think it's, it's a great question. You can't just assume that things just pick up where they left off. I think, you know, what we did last year, we're trying to do some of the same things in regards to stimulate, you know, the guys, you know, hanging out together. Um, growth on the court together. You know, some of these guys were, you know, playing for contracts last year. Now they've been settled. They have some comfort there. How does that impact a guy's day-to-day -day approach? Um, it's a totally new dynamic. You know, it's it's the same group, but it's it's a new season. You know, now there's more expectations on the guys than we had last year. If you think back to when we were sitting here, I was sitting here last year. You know, I, we were in a completely different place. You know, I think we were hopeful to compete for a play-in spot. Um, you know, things we got fortunate with how things played out last year. We had guys come together, we had guys developing and growing, uh, developed a, gr a unique style of play. But you can't just assume that that's just gonna <laughs> pick up where you carried off. And there's a great, it's a great saying I always follow, I always believe in that just because you're on the right track doesn't mean you're going somewhere. You're gonna get run over if you don't keep moving. We gotta continue to, to push these guys to grow as players, but also continue to push the chemistry to stay strong because you know, guys accepting their role is a huge part of a team's success. You can, I always feel like I can watch a team, I can tell the chemistry of a team by watching the guys on the bench. 
how do they react when there's success on the court? It's the guys that they're competing with for players. And I think if you guys would all say, if you watched our team last year, the bench was great energy, great support, great enthusiasm. You now we want to see that again. You can't just assume that's going to be there. You got to encourage those things because that's a big reason of why we were successful in who we are. Is there any concern about guys? I don't know, maybe on the flip side of that, you guys had a lot of established roles at the end of last year. You had a, a, a combination that worked. I mean, do you want to make sure there's not sort of stasis there in the same way? I mean, do, do you want to also make sure there are guys that believe being in camp they can be somewhere different than they were a year ago? How do you kind of match that balance of wanting to keep that continuity, but also making sure guys start Monday believing that they can be in a better place than they were at the end of last season? Yeah, I think. Coach Carlisle would tell you training camp is a big part of guys establishing their fit on the team. You know, that's your, your your opportunity to show, you know, where you're at as a player, what you're willing to do to help the team. If you put in the time to improve yourself and grow and develop, it's going to show. If you didn't, it's going to show as well. But I don't think, you know, our coaches want training camp just to be a, you know, walk through type of just go through the motions. This is going to be a competitive camp. and. We've communicated to all of our guys, and especially some of our young guys who want an op- more of an opportunity that go prove it. You know, this is your opportunity in camp. Go compete. We expect this to be a really competitive camp for, for some spots. We got guys playing to make the team. We got guys trying to start. We got guys trying to get in the rotation. So there's a lot of competition going on, which should raise the level of play, which helps your team hopefully get off to a good start. But if you know guys are coming into camp just wanting to play their way into shape and you know coast into the role, that's not going to be the case, and that's. That's part of not being content with where we're at. It's the day-to-day approach, starting with training camp, of guys competing with each other. When the schedule comes out, we like to analyze and break down all the pros and the cons. When you saw it, what did you think of the schedule presented and maybe specifically some of the challenges early? I saw a trip overseas in the middle of the season that I don't <laughs> normally see. So that's, that's going to be a little different challenge this year for our guys. Um, but I know it's, it's hard to tell at the beginning of the year. You, you always refer back to who were the good teams last year, what were the tough trips last year. I feel like every season is completely a new story and it can be unique in its own way. Um, you know, there's there's parts of the season where they, you feel like, oh, this is a, could be a favorable stretch, but it ends up you might have an injury or one of these two teams you think oh, is going to be very good has a great year. I'm sure people were looking at us on the schedule last year thinking, okay, we play Indiana twice in the next week. That would be an easy stretch for us. It's hard to know for sure. You're more or less looking at the back-to-backs, the travel, um, than you are the opponents. You know, where the tough stretches when it comes to travel and rest, and um, you know that trip in the middle of the season will be will be you know something unique. None of our guys have done that before. I've never done it in season before. You know, how does that affect you coming back from that trip? Um, but you know, I think you, our our league has been the parity is better than it's ever been in my 20 years in the league. Um, the Eastern Conference got better, several teams did. So we got to continue to keep up with, with, with all these teams as they're continuing to grow as well. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chad.